Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monovlock. I've had a few questions recently about identifying capacitors that need to be removed. I'm not going to be demonstrating the electrical testing of these. I just want to give you a couple of visual pointers that will give you an idea of when a capacitor is bad and also things that seem to set off alarm bells for people that aren't actually anything to worry about. So here I've got a port of seven. A lot of times people are opening these up and they're saying, oh no, I've got leaky capacitors because look at all this stuff, the base of these capacitors. Um, that's glue. These are the filter capacitors that smooth out your rectified DC input. It's quite typical for them to have glue at the base just because they've got a bit of weight to them and so if they're getting shuggled around then the weight of the capacitor could disturb the solder connections at the bottom. So that isn't something to worry about but this is something to worry about. When you talk about a capacitor being swollen or bulging, this is what we mean. This is actually quite an extreme case. If I try and get this, I've just spilt tea over my desk. There we go, I've mopped up the tea and got a slightly better angle. And so I'm trying to get almost a perpendicular to this. That should be straight across there, but you see that that's pushed up. And on this one, um, the metal top's actually pushing up all together. So that's a, a really swollen capacitor. So without doing any electrical testing, I know that would need to be replaced in order to make this unit work. Here's another unit, um, we've got a 44 Mark III here and again you can see that there is some glue at the base of all three of these large filter capacitors. Now I would guess that these two are okay. That one there that I'm pointing at now I'm not so sure about because you see how there's a kind of um, darkness to the glue. So that is glue but I think it's maybe some of the electrolytic fluid in there has discoloured that glue and that's why it's browner than these ones. That's a hunch but what I'm saying is if you've got one of these and it looks like that then yeah do remove it and test it. Briefly to talk about how you test it you need to take it out of circuit usually. Some meters like my X-Tech one here have got a capacitance reading. For instance those filter capacitors that I was showing you there are about 4700 microfarads so if the capacitance you were getting from the meter was significantly different to that then that would be a cause for concern. The other thing is to test the equivalent series resistance I used to have a good ESR meter, but it actually got destroyed in the house fire I had last year. I've still got the manual for it here, but that's not a reading that you would get on most multimeters. If I use the example, I just gave 4,700 microfarads, and I believe they were 25 volts, so I should only have 0 0.03 ohms of equivalent series resistance. If it was higher than that, then that would be an indication that the capacitor needed to be replaced. And you can't always tell by looking at them. I'd be astonished if that swollen one from the Port 07 that I just showed you didn't have a bad ESR reading. But this is what you would do, like so this one where you think it might be a problem, but not necessarily. Also, just for shits and giggles, I'll show you the uh, results of me being an idiot. I recently did a recap and a couple of these I somehow managed to wire in the wrong way around because it's electrolytic capacitors are polarized so they've got a positive and a negative and uh, so as soon as I turned this on on I heard a pop and there was a bitter smell and um, it looked like a little Kleenex tissue for a rat or something it was a little you know like a little bit of tissue paper poking out you can see that yellow thing I wonder if I can pull some more out so it actually popped so much that the, some of the roll of paper inside came out it's broken off since and also this one, you see how that's caved in? So yeah, if you see something split like that, or for a smaller one, caved in like that, that's a sign that something needs to be replaced. The electrolytic fluid inside these capacitors, some designs it's acidic, some designs it's caustic. So it varies, but it can leave some discoloration or sort of residue on the board. So for instance, I was doing 424 Mark III, which had some problems, a little bit of glitchiness popping and, and crackling on playback. So I had a look at the mixer board uh, where the left-right buses are located and there seemed to be some kind of residue there, which was different to dirt and accumulated filth and other bits of the mixer. So I replaced all the 
capacitors around there, all the electrolytic ones, on the assumption that a small amount of fluid had leaked from one of those. If you want to know more about identifying bad capacitors, I'm, I'm sure there's loads of other people who've got videos on it. I may do more videos on it in the future, but I just wanted to do a quick one, especially about this issue with people getting the glue, the base of some capacitors mixed up with leaky electrolytic fluid. I hope you find that helpful and hope to see you again soon.